Okay, so here we are. Good day to you, my fellow educators. Welcome to the second wave of free webinar series brought to us by Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute. I am Narjin D. Balili, a special science teacher of Philippine Science High School Central Visayas Campus and a member of APID. I will be the resource person today and I'm going to share about teaching learning between the screen, creating connections through engaging activities. And I hope we learn something new in this webinar. Okay, so before we proceed, I would like to request all the participants to observe the following expectations. The first one is you must be a registered participant. The registration link was posted already on our Facebook page. Second, watch and listen all throughout the lecture so we may be able to learn more. The third, we encourage everyone to like and to share the video to your colleagues and other educators. And last, please evaluate um, the webinar for our future reference. Your evaluation also is your ticket to get your electronic certificate. Thank you. For this webinar, I would like to discuss the specific objectives. First, the side effects or challenges of the online learning. The online learning seems to be a good option at these trying times. As teachers, we should be aware of these challenges in order for us to find solutions. Second, the possible initiatives in the class to encourage connection, enthusiasm, and participation among students. Even in the real classroom setting, we are aware that sometimes it is difficult to sustain the interest and participation of our students, how much more when they are behind the computer screens. Third, the guiding points for us to live by when handling class online. And lastly, sharing of our own challenges as online teachers. Some key terms will be used all throughout the lecture. I would like to contextualize the following terms for this purpose. The first is connection. It refers to how well we are able to encourage the students to participate. Classroom refers to online classroom and class activities refer to possible significant and engaging tasks of the students in the online learning. So the term between, between the screen figuratively refers to the challenges in the online class setting. Last month, I had a conversation with one of our scholars. I asked how her work at home set up has affected her. And she replied, you know, mom, I would barter my freedom of not going out from school for as long as I am in front of my teacher. It's so weird looking at the screens all the time. It's totally different when I'm facing a real teacher, having all sorts of expressions and habits. I learn more and I'm more productive when I see my teacher teaching. The option to take the path to online education during COVID-19 mainly substitutes or provides alternative to face-to-face -to -face app. Webinars of all sorts of online learning are up for grab nowadays. The teachers are trying to fool their cups for the upcoming online learning, which will start in August if God will permit. Okay, in short span of time during the spread of this COVID pandemic across the world, schools were abruptly ordered to halt the classes. As parents panic for the safety of their children and loved ones, teachers, on the other hand, are anxious for both safety and education of their students. As we try to weigh whether to have face-to-face, -face, blended, or worse, suspended learning, we cannot give up the idea of putting on hold our students' learning and future. Therefore, the good option, but even better or the best option, is through online learning. However, online learning has already impending challenges to us and to our students as well. We cannot ignore that it's our duty to find remedies for these challenges, right? So here are some of the challenges in the online teaching and learning situation. First, 
is the instruction is more on content than practice. Second, there is less interaction between teachers and students and even among students. Third, some students and even teachers experience online learning anxiety. Fourth is the challenge on instructional practices in the class. And last is the challenge on assessment and feedback. So for content over practice, the tendency of the teacher is to plan for the sake of theoretical instructions, assessments, requirements, and submission. Now during this situation, since we are teaching online, it is easier or tempting for us to put everything in classroom and post submission date. Thus, the instruction is heavy on writing, quizzes, worksheets, and more. The bar image illustrates the higher emphasis on knowledge and understanding and lesser on the critical analysis and application on the online learning. Supposedly, that's the other way around, right? Now, in the real sense, theoretical knowledge needs to be reinforced by practice because students cannot learn to swim, for example, or feel empathy to others if they only discuss and memorize everything in class. So we have to bear in mind that theoretical knowledge has less value until our students apply it for real life situation. So the next challenge is limited interaction. Now limited interaction has side effects. Online education creates monologue learning environment. Therefore, the connection and rapport will less likely to lessen. The absence or even lack of face-to-face -face communication will inhibit students to connect with their peers and classmates. Now on the requirement part, students will likely to fall short in their submission because the teacher is not around to give them heads up from time to time. Limited interaction will also cause social isolation, which may lead to mental health issues like stress, anxiety, and negative thoughts. I'm curious if some of us have manifestation of social isolation. Maybe for the parents, they cannot relate since they have social interaction with the family members. Now, in the case of our scholars in Pisay, for example, they come from different localities in the Philippines, so they have new sets of circle of friends in school so by sending them back home they said they feel lonely being away from their friends and classmates so the next challenge is online learning anxiety online learning environment may give the teachers a roller coaster ride as we face the curriculum preparation implementation and assessment on the students part according to the study of sadi et al some students experience anxiety with online learning which leads to the side effects in the student's learning performance. And we know, or we are always reminded to leave no pupil behind, right? So the next challenge is the challenge on instructional practices. The first one is lack of time for planning. With the urgent call to shift learning modality from classroom to online learning, we will start from the scratch. There's so many things to think and so many works to do. We'll have the challenge to manage our time, right? Next is balancing diverse learning needs. We are aware of the learning differences and individualities of our students. How to cater them on online learning will take more of our time and effort. The next one is vague instructions. So students sometimes often complain about this, especially during performance tasks and assessment. Confusion takes in when instructions are not so specified and not organized. The next one is flat questions during processes. To formulate right, appropriate, and relevant questions sometimes cause headache. Sometimes WH questions in lower order thinking skills are readily available, meaning they are easy to make. But that's only a part of the desired learning competencies. We are required to explore more on the higher order thinking 
skills prompts. The next one is uninteresting activities. Okay. So this comment often reflects in the observation of the students. Boring is the painful term. And the question, why do I have to learn this? Sometimes students just don't work hard on the task because they couldn't get the purpose of the task to their learning or to their personal growth. The failure happens when teachers only focus on the pure content and not anymore on the significance of the content afterwards. The next challenge is the challenge in assessment and feedback. The question of what to assess in this COVID situation is a pressing matter. Some schools have reprioritized their curriculum to cater the most significant topics and desired learning competencies. There are several skills to assess, but the time is not with us to freely choose what we want. Another issue is how to prevent cheating, okay? We cannot even closely monitor cheating in the physical school, how much more online? And the last concern is less reflective feedback from the teacher to the students during intervention time. So all of the effects mentioned lead to disconnection, enthusiasm, and worse, non-participation of the students, which will lead to lower academic performance. However, despite these challenges, we always find ways to initiate a meaningful and useful online learning. So let us consider some initiatives to at least build real life classroom situation that is with possible connection, enthusiasm, and participation. One is hands-on activities. Though it is online learning, it does not mean to say students stick themselves on their seats and only focus on reading, viewing, and answering tests and worksheets. They have to get away from the computer. Now, we will not discredit content and knowledge. However, we are aware that Benjamin Franklin is right about, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember just a little, and involve me and I learn, that it would be our effort lost if we load them up with more content. Now, scientists believe that when children use all of their senses, it helps the brain create pathways that make it easier and quicker to retain information. One example is work at home exercises, which are relevant to students' lesson. The plus factor of hands-on activities is the enjoyment the students feel. Example, this one. So that's one of the posts of one of my friends. So for today's fun science at home, we made an exploding milk rainbow using milk dish detergent and food coloring, but Kuya would rather call it the Big Bang. So that's an example. Further, I would like to share some hands-on activities at home of different teachers in different subjects. For example, uh, for, for PE subject, the teacher shared, students are expected to exercise and do some activities throughout the week. What the student does is then recorded onto an activity log that is to be submitted weekly. Now, we want our students to engage in activities they enjoy. All the teachers may be posting ideas for workouts. There is also flexibility for students to choose from their favorite or preferred activities. Now, for social science teacher, she suggested that when learning about maps, for example, student can create their own salt map. If they are learning about others' native country and their culture, students can prepare a traditional meal, dress up in costume, or learn a traditional dance. Now, if they are learning about ancient civilization, they can create a model of civilization. And after that, present it to the class. Another example is from language and literature teacher. She shared that in my class, for the part of speech, students can identify their favorite part of the house. Either they create a story which highlights verb, for example, or describe in detail. A chemistry teacher shared, 
when we get to acids and bases, students can make an acid base indicator with red cabbage. So I was thinking of doing an interactive class where students tell me what household products they want to know the page and then discuss why the results are the way they are. And for the music class, the teacher said, my choir class was given PDF of the music a recording of their voice part and a recording of the piano accompaniments for our upcoming concert. Okay. We discussed the musical terminology and aspects of the music and the students video recorded themselves singing and submitted it on Google Classroom. Hands-on manipulation is common in all sharing. The enthusiasm and connection come in when students do practical skills because when students do something hands-on, they, re they remember better. Practical works also promote experiential learning and also work encourages self-learning. Now, it is more interesting if practical works are assigned collaboratively or cooperatively. In doing so, students can practice values like sharing, cooperation, team spirit, compassion, and more, even though it's just virtual. By giving hands-on activities, teachers also consider the needs of the students. The other initiative is to encourage interaction. In online learning, communication or interaction must not be taken for granted. Since face-to-face -face is far from possibility this time, there must be a substitution method. Some ways to do are regular video chats, this discussion board and chat rooms this could help lessen negative effect that might experience by the student or we can use google classroom messenger and other platforms now the goal is to encourage interaction to also avoid social isolation as i mentioned previously Peer-to-peer -peer activities and online lectures can be facilitated by the teacher. So in this way, we won't jeopardize the communication skills of the students. This will be our venue also to monitor our students through peer-to-peer -peer and individual feedback. Another initiative is to consider online learning safety net. We are all affected by the emergence of online learning, especially to those who are new or to those who feel uncomfortable in online setup. Online learning can be pressing for our students. That's why we should consider to create safe environment for them during the learning teaching process. We can practice safe. So we have S-A-F-E. S for secure, safe, online environment by setting privacy agreement and confidentiality. We cannot just post the responses of our students without their permission. They may have wrong response and we must be keen on giving them constructive feedback to avoid embarrassment. Also, check the comments that may be destructive or offensive so you can instantly give interaction a is for accept learners pacing give them thinking time other students are very vocal so once the question or prompt is posted you can get quick response on the other hand Consider also shy students who would like to think their answers over before posting. So we can be flexible the way we treat requirement submissions also. F is for face online challenge at a time. Uh, in order to do this, we need to plan our schedules because our work entails preparation of materials, videos, presentations, assessments, assignments, and more. Now, last is E for equip yourselves with the online environment. If we are new to the new normal setup, let us not be shy to reach out to someone who is familiar with the e-learning environment, or if not, YouTube has too many tips to offer. We must sometimes feel anxious about everything, 
but we are expected to brace the waves of online learning. Now, to make your life easier, set up your learning management system. Example, you can have Google Classroom, Moodle, or depending on the personal or institution's choice. Okay, next initiative is for the instructional practices and assessment. Now, this is the core of our teaching and learning experience. We may have to serve a lot on the table, but at least we can focus more on the beneficial and engaging activities. Now, suggested activities are to boost critical thinking, promote authentic collaboration, give meaningful assignment, and assess what matters. boost critical thinking by asking relatable questions. How? Let us evaluate our questions in the process of discussion. Students love to draw from their personal experience. Asking them relatable questions will give them enthusiasm to think about the answer instead of copying the answer from the internet or answering for the sake of compliance. For example, Asking them, why is pandemic a serious issue? This is an important question, but it does not require students to offer details about their personal thoughts or opinion on the matter. Now, if you're going to pose this question instead, how could be the effect of COVID-19 impact or change your future? And how does this make you feel? This question will solicit students' perspective, and they will make a thoughtful answer because the question involves their future. Another way is by placing culture aspect in the discussion. In this way, they can be asked to compare between their own culture and the target ones. Let's say, compare your culture as Gen Z and the target culture of the baby boomers. So this gives them the chance also to think critically and allow them to recognize and respect different backgrounds and culture. Another way is by placing a culture aspect in the classroom. Now, in this way, they can be asked to compare between their own culture and the target one. Let's say, compare your culture as Gen Z and the target culture of the baby boomers. This gives them chance to think critically and allow them to recognize and respect different backgrounds and cultures. So the other one is incorporate authentic resources from the target topic like infographics, articles, songs, films, podcasts, commercials, written ad, and more. Let us take a look at this figure. We're going to imagine this as student task bell. So we have here remembering, understanding, analyzing, applying, evaluating, and creating. Now, as we prepare our questions or our lesson processes, let's utilize Bloom's taxonomy appropriately. In this way, you will be guided of the questions and tasks you will give to the students. Consider the bell curve. Remembering and understanding will have 5 to 10%, analyzing and applying 80 to 90%, evaluating and creating 5 to 10%. By considering this, you will be guided what questions to ask. As observed, application and analysis have the highest distribution, right? Therefore, you will have more for higher order thinking skills questions. By the way, this distribution standard is for Philippine Science High School. You may have different distribution, but it is highly encouraged to put more percentage on this part, applying, analyzing, and more so to evaluating and creating, and less of remembering and understanding questions. Next, promote 
authentic collaboration with and among students. The computer cannot replace us, right? It is important that we set a real face-to-face -face using video chat or video conference. We can also adjust collaboration based on students' preference. If your students are shy type, you can lean towards blogs, discussion posts, and asynchronous activities. If students are more of outgoing type, you can consider hosting real-time preparations and group meetings. Another consideration is give meaningful writing assignments connected to pandemic or current relevant issues. Example, interview senior members at higher risk of the close community about their stories. Involve yourself as a teacher in generating interview questions with your students. Now, students may also interview older family members through phone calls or video chats. This will give students a chance to understand a broader sense about the views of older, older generations experience. Now, another one is set up folding stories. Somehow this is very, this is also interesting. Set up a randomized like list of your students in group of desired grouping. The first student sends you his or her contribution of the story. Then get the last sentence or phrase of the story and send it to the next student. Make sure to include some special instruction. For example, you create a tension or conflict or it's time to end the story. So each of the contributor will create a part of the story to form a whole story. And then after that, they will present in class. The last initiative is on assessment and feedback. Now in this situation, COVID and online learning, always consider to assess and measure what matters. A more suitable assessment must lead to the question, is this significant to the lifelong learning of my student? Now, let us stop assessing everything. We have to decide on what we need to know and what nice to know, okay? Consider essential learning, standard prioritization, and what is real. We teachers can have for example, personalized, student-driven, inquiry-based, and more dynamic creative projects. So for example, if, we're, if we are teaching verb, we can ask the student to capture an image of him or her doing household activities or chores and let him or her describe using audio recorder or write a caption. This will demonstrate writing or speaking skill of the student. This will also reduce, on the other hand, the anxiety and somehow increase metacognition. Assign performance tasks and performance in single skill, which applies knowledge to a new and novel situation. You can also host conversation and oral defense. Direct one big event into smaller events until its completion. So another one is teach students academic dishonesty and trust to avoid cheating. It's very important. And provide feedback on what works in a quick email or message or chat. You may also use exit ticket as formative assessment. So you can see exit ticket on Google, Google Classroom. So Another is we have to emphasize a reflective process to get insight into students' needs. Sometimes let the student understand that the process they use to arrive at their solution is often more important than the answers. And maybe we can personalize also feedback because personalized feedback has a positive impact on the student. This will lead to the learning process more comfortable and open. With this, motivation level also of the student will increase. Okay. So connection in the classroom requires authenticity, collaboration, 
practical tasks and relevant practices. So through this means, we may lessen the challenges in the online teaching learning situation. We may be far from our students, but we still have to ensure that their learning and our effort will not be hidden behind the screen. So as we are aware of our roles as teachers in online learning, we are encouraged to be aware of the challenges we face and we experience in what they call remote learning. But I am optimistic that we can shift challenges and obstacles into more opportunities of meaningful experiences. Meaningful means we carry the content with our students' needs in mind, so they will feel that we are still trying to reach out trying to give them the best education we can give. In our discussion today, we can understand that an online class to be meaningful, class instruction must be relevant to students' life and present situation. With that, we consider highlighting the following apieties, teaching qualities during online learning so that students will stay tuned and stay connected. So we have here A for authentic, P for proficient, A for accessible, E for engaging, T for tech savvy, I for innovative. With being authentic, we must be true and sincere to our responsibilities as teachers. Being proficient, we must be competent in the subject matters we deliver in class. Being accessible, we must be easy to reach by our students. There are moments of confusion and their only refuge are their teachers. Being engaging, our lessons, we must design engaging instructional activities in a way that students will anticipate attending our class and submit their class requirements. Being tech savvy, we must be well informed of the technology today. So, we'll know what platform is the best for our instruction and being innovative we must find ways for new original creative ideas for our classes to sustain enjoyment engagement connection and authentic learning okay so today's technology should be used strategically and passionately toward the end in all facets of education technology can be used to support and augment a more meaningful content, engaging classroom activities, and significant assessments. In this way, students will feel that although we are in the middle of remote situation, real education is still taking place. So let us be guided by the qualities we need. Thank you. So if you want to read more about our topic today, you may refer to the following references. So at this moment, we would like to ask if you can share your thoughts about the challenges that you may possibly encounter in online learning teaching situation this August. That's the start of our class. Perhaps in our own little way, we can be of help in the future. So please share your responses through our message box. Thank you. And lastly, we are teachers, so we are considered superheroes and heroines in changing challenges into opportunities. So let us accept the challenge and may God bless us all. And together, stronger, we educate. Have a nice day to all.